Hi folks, how we doing? Let me check and make sure they haven't turned my microphone off real quick. We there we go. Uh, hi, how are we doing? Uh, today is the 18th day of November 2020. I believe it is a Wednesday. <laughs> I don't make a video. I always the day before. I always forget what day it is. <sighs> Senior moment, I guess. How are we doing? Uh, just a quick update. I have three more days left on my community guideline strike. Now, why did I get a guideline strike? Because I read uh, an FDA publication uh, about uh, rapid antigen tests. Um, whoo! Um, some wrong think there from the FDA, huh? Anyway, uh, so that is going to be over in three days if they don't give me yet another strike. Right now they have not as of yet. Um, but that's the one I'm on now. Anyway, so three days I'm back on that. Just so you know, I am on BitChute. Um, 291 uh, subscribers. Sub survivors. Um, and, of course, uh, uh, I have a brand new tube channel as well. Not doing as well. I think I have one subscriber, <laughs> uh, but I'm doing all right. Uh, I have no idea. Listen, I can only put like a, a 10 minute limit video on, on so I got to make shorter videos. Hopefully I can get them up on this. The last one was like 14 minutes and they rejected it. So I will make this as short and sweet as possible. Okay, let's go with this. This is from... Uh, Hotep uh, Nebuchadnezzar, 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 um, at Chad is my name uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you do, why, why you don't follow him. You should. Uh, funny. Good stuff. Um, this is Gavin Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom of the great state of California. Um, and this is the funniest part of his uh, mea culpa speech he gave yesterday <laughs> um, talking about this party at the French laundry facility it's a it's French laundry is a is a very 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 high-end place in Napa Valley uh, to go have lunch or hang out with see and be seen uh, in California's hmm, with California's beautiful people um, and he did that and was caught doing that uh, by the San Francisco Chronicle. They're the ones who came out with the article. <laughs> of course, I tried to pull that up for you, but it's behind a paywall. Of course. You would think something that important, uh, the governor of the fucking state of Florida, a uh, state of California, uh, doing something that he tells everybody else they can't do. You'd think they'd want people to read it. Uh, I wanted to play a little, little bit of this for you. It, it dawned on me, I was watching this the fourth time because it kept having to go back and, and, and take notes and do this and that. And it dawned on me. Uh, he's at points, at the beginning, he's a valley girl. I swear to God, he sounds like a fucking valley girl. Which makes sense, I guess, for his age, because when he would be young, when he was younger, valley girls were a thing. But then he turned into somebody else, and it was it was getting on my nerves. I couldn't figure out who the fuck it was, until I did. He starts doing his best impersonation of Barack Obama. I mean, it's just another another fucking case of cultural appropriation. But in this time, he's doing his best. To come across as folksy and 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 not highfalutin and you know down on your level and but it's it, it, his delivery sounds exactly like fucking Barack Obama. Hang on, listen, listen to this part. This is the funniest part of the whole thing. This is, I mean, there's a lot of it that's funny. It is sickening to listen to. <laughs> Whenever I hear people like this who are so patently artificial. I think to myself, does he do this with his family? When, when, his, when his wife busts him, 
Okay, okay honey. Yeah, people, uh, I'm human. People are human. Uh, I make mistakes. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a little blowjob from a $5 crack whore in the alley. Okay, I know it's in bad taste, but, you know, I'm human. Uh, it's only happened three times, and it won't happen. I'll tell you all three times. Once there was the dude. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Does he really talk that way to his family? He can't. I mean, there's, his family would stab him. <laughs> Stop doing it, Daddy. Stop doing it, Daddy. Oh, come on, honey. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, God damn. <sighs> I, I just wonder that sometimes when I see these people talking like this and doing like and, and, and acting like this. It's like Hotep, it's like Hotep uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar says, uh, fuck these people, Jesus Christ! But there you go. Let's let's have a listen. This is the worst part. This is the dumbest part of it. This is the dumbest part of it. And I'm sure he he's, he got a beating from his wife when he got home for this. <coughs> have a listen to this for a second. Have a listen to this. This is this is classic. Three times since. In fact, I know it's been three times. I remember all of those dinners very very vividly uh, since February. Just three times. Uh, twice with my wife by myself outdoors. <laughs> He's talking about, okay, okay. It was I, I, I did it three times, other than that time with these people at the French Laundry, and that's all since February. And, and um, yeah, I shouldn't have done it. I feel bad, but you know I'm human. Uh, we're all human. Come on. Um, it, yeah, okay. Uh, twice was with my wife by myself. <laughs> with your wife by yourself? I know it's been three times, and I remember all of those dinners very, very vividly uh, since February. Just three times. Uh, twice with my wife by myself outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> his wife is sitting there off, off camera looking at his ass going, yeah, you're going to be by yourself with your wife for the next couple, two, three or four months. <laughs> you better you better start using that hand sanitizer for something else, bitch. I'll be right back. I got to go to the bathroom. What the fuck? Listen to this guy. A few weeks ago, I was asked to go to a friend's 50th birthday. My wife and I, a friend that I've known for almost 20 years. Friends. Uh, and a friend that and, and I thought put a lot of time and energy into his 50th birthday. <laughs> A, a friend that, he, he, he put a lot of time and energy into the party. Come on. How was I going to say no? He put a lot of time and energy into the party. Uh, and uh, I, so I went, and I sat down, and it was a big party. And I said, well, um, hmm, I could leave uh, because I told everybody not to go to a party. But, you know, I was there, and he put a lot of time and energy into it. So c come on. Loose. Uh, it was in an outdoor uh, uh, restaurant, and we started the well, the program started at four o'clock. I remember it was early reservations. I got there a little bit late at four thirty, uh, and as soon as I sat down, fashionably late. Table, I realized it was a little larger group uh, than I had anticipated, uh, and I made a bad mistake. Instead of sitting down, uh, I should have stood up. And walk back on my car and go back. Fuck you, people! <laughs> How dare you celebrate someone's life and achievements? Fuck all you people! I'm out. I have standards, you bastards. Uh, to my house. Instead, I chose to sit there with my wife uh, and a number of other couples that were outside the household. You can quibble about the guidelines, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but the spirit of what I'm preaching all the time uh, was contradicted. And I got home now. And so I'm going to apologize to you. So now, now he turns into Obama. Um, because I need to preach and practice, not just preach and not practice. And I've done my best to do that. Uh, we're all human. We all fall short sometimes. 
Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Okay, so I've only got a few more minutes because I've been dragging this thing out too much. Uh, his party, by the way, uh, this guy from 50-year-old part, this 50-year-old's party that he, he worked so hard uh, to put together um, was for a guy named Jason Kinney. Jason Kinney ha has his own lobbying firm called Axiom Advisors. Uh, he also, just so you know, uh, he, he's, his Axiom Advisors is a big company. A bunch of people do a bunch of money. There's a good article here on his cozy ties uh, with this guy at the French Laundry Dinner. That's why he wanted to be there to show support for somebody who has been an, a Democratic Party insider in California for a very, very, very long time. Uh, was a... Uh, 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 Gray Davis worked for or Gray Davis for a while, worked in his administration. Um, so fascinating stuff here. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of how influential they are. Not all Axiom clients are major corporations. Some are just desperate to get through the gov to the governor for survival. Theme parks have been trying to get the governor's ear for to reopen attractions during coronavirus. You'd think they were the they'd be the worst places to fucking open up. Three smaller amusement park operators, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, San Diego Coaster Company, and San Monica Amusements hired Axiom on October the 1st, right as Newsom officials were discussing reopening the reopening rules. The state ultimately issued guidelines last month that allowed the boardwalk and other small parks to operate. Subsequently, since then, they have shut them down. But they have been involved with a lot of stuff because uh, Jason Kenney has access for God's sake, the governor of fucking California, after issuing a decree that they're shutting down the whole state and saying you can't have fucking Thanksgiving, you God damn sure can't have fucking Christmas. After shutting down the whole state, he goes, and oh, I'm just party, I'm going to party with my friends at this extremely expensive fucking place. Now, uh, as bad as that is, when you go to Axiom Advisors, they don't tell you their history because their history is quiet. Uh, but, uh, fuck, I can't see it. What's his fucking name again? Hang on a second, Jason. Where's Jason? Here we go. What's interesting, uh, he's, he's done a lot of shit. He's done a lot of shit. Uh, but one of the things that I thought was most interesting was he used to be the director of Sa Sacramento's Office of Public Global Public Relations uh, company, <laughs> Burstyn Mosteller. Now, Burstyn Mosteller, I used to, I, I've, I've pulled up, uh, I used to do a lot of writing. Uh, I didn't make videos. I wrote uh, for 11 years. Um and this was uh, an article. This is, the, this is the only thing I can find of it anymore. 96 of uh, Scott Creighton's best articles on the subject of 9-11. 96. Those are the best ones. I wrote a lot more than that. Um, and in this one is an article called, is listed on this list, is an article called uh, Lessons from Oz. Burst and Marstella, uh, I wrote about Burst and Marstella several times. And I've mentioned Burst and Marstella several times. And I still have some of those articles. Um, Lessons from Oz is all about uh, Burst and Marstella and the power they wield and the influence they wield. Enforcing privatizations, neoliberal privatizations uh, on various governments, not just here, but also abroad. Uh, on policy changes. They're very closely connected with uh, ALEC, American Legislative Exchange Council, and they are extremely influential. <coughs> they are the, my, my point with Oz, that reference Oz was, uh, they're the guy behind the curtain. You pull the curtain back, uh, and there's Burst and Mosteller in D.C. And that was 2009 I was writing that. Um, Uh, here's an article that I wrote talking about the influence uh, uh, USAID, CIA front in Ukraine. This is 2014. 
uh, talking about all this. This is uh, actually somebody on Shadowproof uh, copied it and put it up on their on their channel. I don't on their website. I don't know who it was. What we're talking about here. Um, this is an article from uh, Pando Daily talking about uh, how USAID paid public relations giant Burst and Mostella to sell the disastrous voucher program to the Russian public. This is the voucher program they used to bring help bring. Um, uh, uh, what's his fucking face to power? Yeltsin to power back in those days so they can neoliberalize the country back then. Uh, I am apparently not going to be able to post this, um, fortunately, on my channel. Um, <laughs> the whole point of this uh, axiom here, um, a good part of what they do is privatizations. They really push for privatizations and they really push for companies to come to them um, and then they use their political influence in California to privatize certain aspects of the California state government on behalf of those fucking clients. Now, it's interesting and ironic, if you like, uh, that he would go <coughs> to a lobbying, a party for a lobbyist who's firm uh, addresses and caters to, to some degree, uh, helping companies privatize. That's not the only thing they do, but helping companies privatize certain aspects of, of uh, uh, public property or public uh, policy for profit. And they say right in the fucking thing here at the very bottom, um, Axiom Advisors were founded on the idea that California is an extraordinary place of innovation and opportunity, code words, privatization, neoliberalism, where clients are able to do good while doing well. While doing well. A big thing for um, the World Economic Forum is the idea of social entrepreneurship. Doing good while doing well. Making money at that shit. Um, and of course, if you go to the World Economic Forum, what is it that they say right there? Uh, it's always on their page. All of this stuff will change. The titles of these fucking articles and these headlines will change. That stays the same. Well, no, that's that changes too. That's that logo stays the same. All of this changes, except for that. World Economic Forum is the international organization for public-private co co cooperation, which means public-private partnerships, which translates to privatization of the state so that uh, business owners can do well, make money, which never works well for the public, but they don't give a shit. And that, boys and girls, is really the definition, the modern-day definition of fascism. When you hear public-private partnership and you're talking about building back better, what are you talking about? You're talking about global fucking, a global reset for westernized nations to a purely fascist uh, model. And that's what he's talking about. So isn't it odd, isn't it funny that this piece of shit this Valley Girl Obama hybrid decides to blow off and ignore his own fucking dictates to the people of his country, of his, of his, of his state. So he can go hang out with some dude who does exactly the same fucking shit. It's Klaus Schwab is, is professing and pushing for the Great Reset. That's what he's doing. Do you think his point is this? According to him, he's, I'm sorry, it didn't look good. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have been there, but I sat down. He put so much effort into the party. Come on. <laughs> Do you think for a fucking minute if that man actually believed that the Black Plague was floating around someplace 
and the more people breathing, you know they weren't wearing masks sitting around those big tables. Come on. Mask, come on. Let me mess up my makeup. Do you think if he had if he if he thought the black plague was there, he would have been sitting there? He would have stayed? Do you think if he thought the Spanish flu was flying around with the black plague, he would have stayed? It is ironic that that's the person, supposedly, one of the three times he chose to fucking go out twice with his wife by himself. <laughs> he obviously knows that what he's selling to the people of California is bunk. Otherwise, he and those other very wealthy people wouldn't have been there in the first goddamn place. Party or not. I gotta go. Thank you for your time.